welcome everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, we still have sunlight, which is a beautiful thing. Uh, my name is Zach. Um, I'm 32 years old. I do art. I write. Um, I live life um, as much as I can as an introvert. <laughs> um, graduated from Academy of Art University in San Francisco in 2013. I'm currently an Amazon delivery driver. So I deliver packages. Um, I do art commissions here and there, but I slowly stopped uh, to spend more time on writing in the past couple of years. So um, I'd like to start off with a friendly reminder that you are an artist by existence and an influencer by choice. As long as you exist, you're envisioning, creating, you've been born into a world that needs fixing whether it's you or some other area in your life or in the world, you've been granted the tools to do something about it. How you go about self-improvement or your contributions to the world, that's the mark you will leave. Your how is the mark you will leave and the mark you will leave will give insight into where you need to go. So the takeaways from this uh, talk uh, in this presentation, you're gonna learn how to crowdfund a comic on Kickstarter, uh, but I'm also gonna pepper in some words of wisdom here and there that may inspire you. Um, so crowdfunding, if you don't know what crowdfunding is, it's uh, there are different platforms. You, there's Kickstarter, there's um, uh, some other ones that I can't really name right now, but um, they, they're they basically getting backer support from uh, Indiegogo, thank you, Hassan, uh, backer support from anyone who wants to support a project, uh, a project in creation of something, uh, whether it's a comic, uh, a product, um, uh, it could be anything, a book, um, in this case, a comic book. Uh, so you, you can do anything you want and the, there is no limits to it, which is great. Um, but first, before we get into anything deep, uh, we're gonna do an activity. Uh, so this is gonna be a fun activity. Did everyone get a a, uh, their materials, a pen and a, a paper. Does everyone have that? Thumbs up in the chat. Um, okay, so yeah, let's get started on that. Cool, awesome. So you should just have a pen and a paper. Um, if you have a photo of yourself, that's awesome, like print it out or you can have it on your phone or another device. Um, what we're gonna be doing is called a blind contour drawing which is, let me set it up right here real quick. I mean, it, it's almost exactly as it sounds. Uh, here we have a picture of, I printed a picture out of me and then um, a sketch pad. And you're gonna be using a pen, um, an ink pen, hopefully, or any kind of pen or a pencil. Uh, I like pens because they're bold and they just leave the mark uh, with no flaws. So yeah, so this is what I'm gonna be doing. It's only gonna take a couple minutes. Uh, I'm gonna show you a demo first and then we can move into, um, uh, you guys can start doing it whenever you want, um, but we're probably gonna spend about five minutes here. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna look at my photo and I'm not gonna take my eyes off, uh, off the photo and I'm not gonna look at my drawing at all. So I'm just looking at my photo and I'm just moving my hand in the direction of wherever I want to draw the eyes, the nose, the head. Um, so here we go, I'm just gonna start out. And this can be fun, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. That's the beauty of abstraction is that you don't have to know where to go. Um, that's the beauty of life is that you don't have to there's no right direction or there's no, you know, one way to live life. So and I'm just going here. I don't even know what I'm doing, but I know, I know where I want to go because I'm looking at, you know, certain sections of the, of the photo. So yeah, and this is my drawing. Yeah, it's kind of uh, messed up, but it looks really cool. I like how it looks, how it, how it came out. Um, just different features coming off of the actual, my actual head. So 
Um, yeah, you guys can get going, uh, get started on your drawings. Probably have to take a couple of minutes. Hey, at least you tried and this one, all of them, they, they, they don't, they never come out perfect, but yeah. So it should be a one line drawing. You can do a couple of them. Um, just try not to lift your pen. Uh, just think about your next move point A to point B or don't think at all even better. All right, so I'll give you about 30 more seconds to finish those up. And in the meantime, I'll, I'll let you know of the purpose. So the purpose of this activity is that this single line drawing, it uniquely portrays your path in life and a culmination of all the choices that you make that make you who you are. And the power that direction and guidance has to take you where you need to go. So everybody's, you know, looking for a thread to follow. And um, when we find that thread, we just latch onto it and keep going. And sometimes we don't know what direction it's taking us, but uh, we find wherever we are, depending on our state of mind, our attitude and our energy, um, we can really uh, make change and, and bring ripples, you know, into this world, um, which is a beautiful thing because the world is not one answer. Uh, so, okay, let's uh, move on to the backstory of part one slides. So let's see, this slideshow, um, it's gonna be about, I'll, I'll show you my beginning art, like from where I started, and then I'll show you my college art, and then my after college art, and then, uh, some other slides, I'll, I'll get to those in a minute. So um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of uh, insight into my backstory, where I came from, uh, and to who I am today, um, and my art has progressed throughout the years. But I want you to hold in your heads the idea that you never know where life is going to take you, and that um, directly ties into the activity that you just did. Uh, so in middle school and high school, I always, I was a doodler, um, very quiet, uh, but I also liked writing and I got into writing like funny raps and um, would just recite them uh, to classmates. Um, Cause you know, that's what <laughs> you just try to entertain yourself in class. Um, everything to me was boring back then. I didn't, I wasn't into, uh, I just wasn't into anything. And so I tried running away, away a couple of times. Um, the first time I wanted to do it because I wanted to change my situation at home and um, everything was great at home. Uh, I, I didn't see that then because I wanted um, a story, I guess, a story in, in my life as as we all do. Um, the second time I'd gotten into um, drugs and uh, I'd gotten into weed selling and um, growing. And when my parents um, found um, I failed to grow up. Um, I tried running away again only to come back and, you know, reflect on life and my own situation, what I really needed to, needed to do and, um, what I was going through, trying to understand myself, uh, from, from a different perspective than my own. And that always helps to just get, just take a step back, you know, once in, once in a while. And, um, so I, uh, got back into school. I was uh, writing more and also um, just not caring more. Um, writing more like poetry and spoken word. Um, my grades were declining, so I switched schools. I went to Armio High School in Fairfield and then um, switched schools uh, halfway through junior year to go to Buckingham Charter in Vacaville. Um, it's a really cool school. Uh, smaller school, really, uh, cool kids and very creative kids too. So it was probably help, very helpful for me. Uh, cause I, I still have friends there, um, today that I made. Um, so I, I started making music cause I had a studio there and, um, writing and I developed an interest in the mysteries of the universe. Um, just reading a bunch of books about, you know, space and the universe, uh, singularity, 
um, at this point I, I was still, you know, uh, getting into drugs and, um, and then college came around in fall of 2007, I attended the Academy of Art in San Francisco. Uh, by this time I just graduated high school, uh, bless my parents. Although I took an extended education for granted at the time, I was still immature and rebellious and I still made a lot of unhealthy decisions, but college was good. Um, for me, it was a time of growth and I learned so much, not just with art, but through the hardships and challenges that I faced. I was working two jobs at the time, um, cost plus world market and Aaron brothers, uh, art and framing. They're both right next to each other in Fairfield. And I would work those jobs whenever I wasn't, uh, at school. And, um, yeah, it was very, uh, it was just very taxing, but, um, you know, you find a way to get through it. Uh, it's like working in school. So trying to balance everything all at once. Um, but I believe that I was, you know, meant to be some, somebody greater, somebody, um, I just had a, you know, stronger feeling about my role in this, uh, in this existence. Um, I was determined, but misguided and misguided and ended up directing that energy into unhealthy habits. Um, so if we move on to part three slides after college art, Uh, I graduated college by spring of 2013. Didn't really know what to do. I was just taking a break from being busy all the time. And I just worked on personal art for about a year. I quit using and selling by the end of the year. And I mentioned drugs so much because it consumed a lot of my life in time and energy. It did play a big role in influencing the decisions I make today. And maybe I wouldn't be the person I am without having experienced it. But that's not to say that it was good for me. It was my biggest regret in life. And I know I could have accomplished more, but I'm just thankful that God has given me another chance uh, to do better and to, um, you know, do better for pe the people that, uh, um, for the things that you can change and, and the, the people out there who are also going, you know, struggling through the same thing. Uh, so, uh, at that time, so by 2014, um, I graduated by spring of 2013 and then, you know, I took a break and then by 2014, I started working at Costco and, um, yeah, so I stopped doing drugs at that time. Um, and I, I just ended it. And I got the job at Costco, started working. I wanted to get my hands dirty, you know, move like detox uh, myself of not just physically, but uh, energetically, you know, I need to cleanse my spirit and um, try and let myself know that this is normality. This is okay because uh, now I have positive outlets to, um, to express myself through art. I did have to take a break through art. Um, because I associated, you know, the drugs with the art, uh, so much at the time, but I took a break from that and, um, you know, just worked at Costco. So, uh, move on, moving on to part four slides. Uh, so I worked at Costco for about a, a year and eight months. And then I decided, um, we pushed carts out there, like, uh, even in hundred degree weather, like all day. And so this sort of built up my legs um, in preparation for the bike trip that I wanted to take. Uh, I hadn't ridden a bike in a long time and I decided, you know what? I wanna get out of here. I wanna change my situation again. And so um, I decided, man, if I get a bike, where, do, where would I go, right? And my sister at the time, she lived in Brooklyn, New York. Um, so she was living there for like five years or whatever. Uh, she'd been living there for like five years. And then, so I was like, man, if I want to get a bike, I want to travel. Right. <laughs> and so I decided, okay, let's see how much a bike costs. Let's see, you know, do all the numbers. Right. And so I just decided, um, and I didn't tell my parents or my family or anybody that, uh, I was going to do this. 
Um, but eventually I did. And, uh, luckily, you know, like I was just so blessed, so blessed to have the network that I, I do have in my life, my family, my friends. And, uh, so I just took the bike trip, uh, 70, it took me 71 days. So it's like a little over two months or something. Um, from Fairfield, California to Brooklyn, New York. And I stayed in New York for a while. Um, probably like a few months or there was like eight months. Cause, uh, yeah. Anyways. So the bike trip was really good. Um, I just pushed hard, you know, like I met a couple of great people, a couple of people doing the same thing I was. And, uh, but, you know, always for different reasons. And for me, it just really, I had social anxiety. I still do. Um, when I get in just like large groups of people and talking and whatever, but, you know, I really wanted to push myself. I like to challenge myself and see what, um, what I can grow from. And, uh, it turned out to be a beautiful trip beautiful experience uh of course there's going to be a struggle a lot of struggles along the way but you know you find a way to push through those and you just along that journey along those uh struggles you look for the beautiful things and that that's really um where your growth comes from uh to me um so yeah it was a great trip and uh Okay, so moving on to part five slides, volunteering. Um, so I got into volunteering a lot more after my bike ride. I don't really know what clicked, but I could attribute my growing drive to help others by my to my growing faith in my own personal relationship with God. At Costco, I'd love helping others load things into the car or help them with questions I figured God gave me a good physical and mental health for a reason and a strong will to help others that I asked myself, why let it go to waste? I did have a realization at some point when I looked back at all of the people I influenced to do drugs. And I figured instead of using my abilities and passion for unhealthy things, I could use my abilities and passion to influence people to do healthier things. So I started volunteering for the Mac Garcia Foundation, a nonprofit in Fairfield. Uh, you may already be familiar with the organization, but if you don't know what it's about, um, I, I thought I saw um, one person from Pal Center. Um, yeah, if you don't know what it's about, uh, Matt Garcia was his youngest city council member at 21 years old in California. He was on his way to do great things for the community when he tragically lost his life over a mistaken identity at 22 years old. His dream was to stop crime and engage the youth by creating healthy activities for them and safe places for them to be instead of out on the street or at home with nothing to do. My sister was friends with him and my mom had been involved and still is uh, since the organization was conceived. So that's how I got back into it, uh, back into volunteering. I think volunteering is the best thing you can do for yourself and the environment you live in. It really shows what unconditional love is because when you're giving 100% of yourself, you don't expect anything in return. You learn things they don't teach you in school, like how to be better, how to be a better person and how to feel better. Things that the world really needs. I've been a board member for the past few years and they've become my second family. So I highly recommend serving in some way, even if it's helping someone load their car or just being aware of your surroundings more and more so that you can create more opportunities to help others. Okay, so moving on to that uh, photo, the path in life. Um, all of this to say, the canvas is your life. You are the pen. Like I said, you never know where life is going to take you next. The best part about that is not knowing what will grab your interest what will change your life or how you will change from it. Now, that's the beauty of abstraction. You've got to switch things up if you want to see different results. Find direction, take steps to get there, and train your body to be excited about the unknown because ultimately, you are the creator of your future and you should be excited about a future, excited about a future you want to have. The best way to prepare for an unforeseeable future is to make space. Clear out any unwanted energy and invite a healthy state of mind. When you change your attitude about your environment, 
your space, your relationships, and yourself. If it all comes from a place of compassion, only good things can happen. So embrace it all, the struggle, the pain, the irritations, the frustration, the joys of learning and building character, the fulfillment of spiritual growth, the hope and faith in something greater than yourself, the reflection for wisdom, the opportunities to change and to be changed, the awareness of it all, and the cumulative drive to pay back the ones who helped you along the way, as well as the proactive need to pay it forward to other flowers waiting to bloom. So moving on to... Um, Part six. Uh, so this is where we get into the comic. Um, and uh, so in, around 2017, my childhood friend and I created Deep Theory, a comic book anthology series of questions better left unanswered. So um, at the time, I wasn't into comics. Uh, I kind of had this this thing about um, not being into comics, like, I don't know why. Uh, I, I think I just associated it with a younger crowd, a younger audience. But um, so it started because my, my friend was really into comics and he brought this idea to me that he wanted to make a comic. And so I was like, okay, cool. And he knew I was an artist. And so he asked me if I wanted to illustrate and draw um, his ideas. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Um, so uh, his idea was um, mainly about uh, sleep paralysis. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of sleep paralysis, but it's this uh, thing that happens to humans. It's kind of mysterious that um, when they, when you're asleep or like if you're, you may wake up fully conscious and aware with your eyes wide open and then you have this, um, you can't move, you're paralyzed. So that's why they call it sleep paralysis, uh, but you're fully conscious. So, um, but they, you know, people have seen things they have, uh, they don't know what it is or, and it's just maybe a play on their fear on uh, using, you know, fear, using your imagination to create these things from the feeling. Um, but anyway, so yeah, he's, he's, he's had pretty deep experiences with uh, sleep paralysis and, so uh, he was just telling me how um, he wanted to make a comic out of it. And so we started an ambitious comic um, of, you know, a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> and um, that didn't really get us anywhere except for where we needed to be, which was uh, the comic that we came to today and which is called Deep Theory. And it's a mixture of both of our ideas where we can both... Um, take the lead on an idea per issue. And so it's an anthology. So every issue is different. It's like, you know, watching black mirror or, um, twilight zone. Uh, so every episode is going to be different. And, um, so yeah, uh, son, uh, can we play the trailer or is that possible? Yeah. Right, you, want me to, you want me to pull it up right now? Yeah, that would be great. And then I'm gonna, um, yeah, let's play the trailer, and then I'll I'll post the uh, the link Kickstarter link in, in the chat. Just bear with me for a minute. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I hope everyone is enjoying their day so far just having time to enjoy <laughs> the time that you do have, right? It's always a blessing. I'm gonna have it up right now. Cool, cool. Yeah, so we um yeah, we we started this Kickstarter back in November of uh last year. And we we didn't really we started writing and uh we got really excited and um 
I mean, it wasn't too much excitement to, to start it, but we just wanted to start, see, you know, get a feel for where we were, uh, what we were doing. So here it is. What April fight belong? What purpose would we here for? It's not like the other one. This fungus. It must allow us to communicate telepathically, somehow connecting us. Cool, right on. Um, so yeah, that was the uh, trailer. So you guys can check that out as I'm going through through about 14 slides and I'll let you know if like you know even if it's something that you don't that you're you you know you're not going to do um it's always cool to know the process of uh what goes into making a, a kickstarter or crowdfunding uh project um I always enjoy the process of things um so yeah let's go to the first slide of this comic book slideshow um, browse Kickstarter or other crowd crowdfunding platforms. Uh, you can take notes for inspiration um, and reference uh, industry standards. Uh, just knowing, you know, what other people are doing and how they're doing it, and um, and it, it's just a great time to, you know, like starting fresh. A great time to. Uh, just soak up that inspiration and, and see what other people are doing. So um, this Kyra uh, one I used as an example, um, it's really cool. Uh, this project, you can search it, Kyra Kickstarter, um, how they did their, their project was really inspirational to me and my friend Vishal. So we sort of looked to that to see how they did it because it was pretty simple, um, how they set theirs up, the preview, uh, the intro, um, you know, their tier rewards, what backers would be getting if backers, you know, supported the project. Uh, so crowdfunding this Kickstarter, uh, Kickstarter projects have a goal. And if that goal is met, then the project gets funded. So they get those funds. They use those funds to, uh, create the project that backers help them support. Um, and then, you know, they distribute all the rewards out to everybody. So that's um, the basics of a crowdfunding platform. And moving on to the next slide. Um, so brainstorm ideas and write without limiting yourself. And this is a great time to explore what you, uh, what you have always wanted to create or um, anything that it could be literally just anything. Um, if you look on Kickstarter, there's so many different projects and they're just, uh, and it's just insane. It, it's almost like a futuristic, um, way to like a new, uh, platform to browse, you know, future products, uh, cause people are very innovative and in, in trying to bring the future into the now, uh, which is really cool. Um, so next, uh, next slide collaborators, uh, finding a community community, such as Reddit, uh, Facebook, Instagram, all those social media stuff. Uh, it always helps to see what other people are doing, like the, the projects that people are creating, not just like, you know, big, uh, industry, you know, big guys in the industry, like, Marvel or, um, you know, DC. Um, it's really cool to see how people come together in, in independent community of, um, comics. I mean, in anything too, 
but um, like you can look on Reddit. We were in comic book collabs in Reddit um, a lot, just browsing like what people, what other artists were, you know, they would post their work and see if they could, could get work from, you know, writers who are browsing uh, comic book collabs, uh, that subreddit or whatever they call. Um, but it's a great, also great, uh, these are great places to look around for if you need an artist um, or if you are an artist and you're trying to get yourself out there um, or if you need a graphic designer or a letterer for your comic. Um, these are great places to look. And okay, next slide. So once you feel you have a you have an idea about what you want to go with um, and you're feeling strong about it, feeling really good, um, you know, just write. So this is the process of really fleshing out what you want to, the story that you want to tell. And uh, once you have all that, like a log line, a summary, an outline, and a, a scene sheet, so the log line is basically a one sentence summary of the whole story without giving any spoilers. Um, this is what you'll find in, uh, on Netflix, on any of the streaming services. If you click on, I'm sure everybody does this. You click on a, a movie and then you read the, uh, that first sentence or the description. So that's going to be your log line right there. And, um, that's the, that's the one that really grabs everyone's attention, you know, like, that's going to either sell you, you know, make you make someone want to watch your movie or make someone not want to watch it. Um, and then you write a summary. Um, once you have your story down, you write a summary. doesn't have to be perfect. Um, every time, you know, you do something, you're going to have to put something out. So when you put when you put something out, it's not going to be perfect every time unless you're some creative, talented genius just born with the greatest gift. But once you put that out, then you can uh, really get other eyes and ears on that and other or other minds on that to see what it what uh, how substantial it is. Um, and then that's where you toss it to an editor. Uh, finding the right editor really matters also. Um, so if I, you know, if I was writing a, a sci fi, you know, horror comic, uh, it doesn't make sense to go, you know, find a Rome uh, romance editor, um, book editor or something, but, um, just browsing, uh, different, we, we got our editor from a friend of ours who also does comics and he suggested him and we went with him and he was just a really great, he currently is our, uh, he's just a really great guy to, um, uh, get a lot of good feedback. Um, it's going to be tough because, you know, when you put so much into your story, uh, you don't, really you become very sensitive of critiques and what people say about your stuff but backing up from that and if you you know you learn how to not take things personally and if you go with into it with a mindset of you know making the story better i want to make the story better then you sort of let yourself down a bit you know you you uh become more vulnerable to for the sake of the project and for the sake of the story. Um, okay, next slide. So once you go through that with uh, with your editor, uh, you're gonna go through a lot of drafts or you may have a really good story and you may not go through any at all. Um, but when you're ready, you reach out to the prospects you've been watching. Um, so such as, you know, uh, pencilers, um, uh, all these. So in, in comics, there's pencilers, there's inkers, there's, uh, there's, uh, a colorist, um, graphic designers, letters, um, all these guys come together, guys and girls, excuse me, um, come together and make the project, you know, what it is. And, um, it's just really like, it's a beautiful thing. And if you develop those relationships with them, um, you can really make some magic happen. Uh, so, it, and this is this is going to be the fun part because when you have that uh, idea and story in your head, um, and it's so strong, and you could see it, imagine it, you could feel it. Um, 
you you sort of you imagine different artists styles to adapt to um your story and once they start to process it once you start to see their drawings their their artwork their forms of expression uh it, it's like magic it just comes out like your story comes to, becomes a reality and so that that's the fun part is um just looking around for uh creative minds to um express your idea that you had in the first place. And um, so once you reach out to your team, if they're available, sometimes they're not available at the time. Sometimes they're really busy. busy. Uh, we got, we, we got lucky because our illustrator, he does pencils, inks and colors. Um, he's really good at what he does. And, um, I mean, all these guys are really good at what they do. And so just developing those relationships and, and trying to communicate as best you can with them always helps to, um, to um, you know, convey your idea. And, okay, next slide. Um, so the next one, developing a strong communicative relationship. Um, so be clear about your deadlines and your vision. Um, if you're not sure about some things, you know, be honest, be honest with yourself, be honest with your team and open up to them um, or leave the door open, you know, for, for them to suggest anything. Uh, they may have some great ideas and sometimes you don't want to budge from your, your, uh, stance on you know the story but there's times when it needs it because once you once the artist starts to uh you know develop your story into visuals the visuals can really change the narrative of where your story is going um those visuals are are can be game changers and can really pivot uh even a moment in in a, in a scene so um, yeah, just, just being open to whatever they have to say. Also, um, working with them as best you can, uh, and deadlines are important because it, it does help to motivate people to get things done on time and, uh, for you to, you know, hold yourself accountable for what you want to get done and accomplish too. Okay, next slide. Um, let's see, we have, yeah, contract, payment, and integrity. So all these business, uh, the business side of art, and you, you, you do have to do all that stuff as much as it, as much as you don't want to, or nobody wants to, um, you, you have to, you know, you just take your time and do your research on what makes sense to both you and the artist and uh, work with the artist and see, you know, if they have any contracts um, that they use for using, have used in other projects. And um, then, you know, once you're working with them, then you can see their con see the contracts that they want and, um, and see where you can both meet in the middle and then pay them on time. Um, it always, it's always nice to keep a happy, uh, you know, keep things happy financially. Um, and if there are changes, then, you know, let them know immediately because, uh, the longer it goes on without the change that you wanted to make, um, the more it is, uh, the more of a burden it is for everyone to have to deal with. And, you know, it's just an avoidable thing. So just catch those problems early, early on in the project before they become something that you don't want it to become. Okay, next slide. And then so uh, now you can brainstorm rewards. Uh, you can think of all the cool stuff um, like this. For instance, this um, is from our project. We had uh, different covers for our comic. 
Um, we have an enamel pin, a holographic sticker. We have some pogs. I don't know if you guys are, um, you probably are. You've heard of pogs um, when they were way back in like in the nineties or something, but uh, yeah, just finding cool stuff, you know, that, that people would want to hold and, and, um, and to feel in their hands and it all does become a part of this story. And so these things like, it's just really cool to see them become things, you know, uh, they just become a reality in this, in this, uh, uh, in re real life. So, um, yeah, so the fun part, just, uh, looking around for cool stuff to, that you want to reward people with. Like if you imagine yourself in the shoes of someone backing your project, what kind of stuff would you like, you know, would you like to have? Um, so if you bring, you know, if you browse other, uh, Kickstarters and, and you see like really cool, um, they got a really cool, like keychain or something, I don't know. Um, then maybe you want to, you know, add a keychain of your own. There's just like different, like you can be creative too. Um, like on our higher tier rewards, we had these, uh, mushroom pendants that, uh, I found on, on Etsy and uh by labatum they're they're super cool um you'll you'll see them when, when you're browsing kickstarter but they glow in the dark too and they glow blue so um which is yeah so there's just like really cool stuff and uh you also want to be re be realistic because some things that that aren't you know reachable like some things may seem really cool but at the same time, you do have to realize like, okay, will I be able to get this in time um, before the Kickstarter ends? Uh, will I be able to ship this out? How will I be able to ship this out? And um, how will I pack all of this stuff in there? So thinking of all the logistics um, while you're browsing and uh, thinking of rewards, um, is just a it's a it's a good thing to do for yourself. Um, you're doing yourself a favor. You're doing everyone else a favor too. Uh, so, yeah. But um, yeah, it that, that's another fun part. The whole thing is fun. Uh, it's just it, it seems like a lot of work, but when you actually take each step one step at a time, it's just like it all comes together. And it, even if it's within two months, you're, when you do like one thing a day or like one thing per week that you need to work on. And this is how uh, it, it helps me is I just like made a, a task, a new task, like for every week, like three tasks per week or something, and then just knock those out each one. And then slowly, you know, you chip away at what you want to get to. And, um, all of a sudden, you know, your project is realized or it's almost realized. And, um, at that point, then you can fine tune and define, you know, fill in the cracks that you, that you forgot to fill along the way. So, um, okay. Next slide. So for the time you do have in preparation for the big launch, uh, work on how you'd like to present the project and logistics, um, printing, shipping, timing, like who you're going to go with the printers. Uh, we went with print ninja, which is, um, used by a lot of comic, um, a lot of indie comics and they're, um, they're, they're, they're very high quality. We've gotten ours, uh, recently in the past week and just like, feeling it is amazing. The quality, um, it really makes a difference, uh, for the physical experience of reading a comic. And so just taking the time out, um, to give your backers something that they, you know, would, uh, would really appreciate. And, um, just thinking of all the logistics, the, uh, like how you're going to, um, when you're going to ship stuff, how you're going to ship stuff. Uh, some of this stuff you do have to play it by ear, but for the most part, you make estimates, you make estimates for the best that you can. And, you know, if some things are off, you can adjust later. Uh, 
Okay, next, uh, next slide. And then uh, marketing plans. So you can browse like uh, social media pl platforms, other Kickstarters that have done the same and, you know, see like what we did was go on Facebook and a lot of the comic book groups that we just browsed, um, a lot of people are just promoting their stuff. Like and that, that's all those groups are. But it's great because uh, great for beginners because then you could click those links um, to their Kickstarters and see how they're doing and how they market theirs, like uh, what they're saying in their posts and and what kind of posts they are and how engaging um, are they. Uh, to be honest, ours, you know, we're very just, you know, trying to get ourselves out there first. But, um, you know, it, social media is a lot of, it takes a lot of time. So just being mindful of, um, of your posts, how meaningful they are. Um, sometimes it doesn't even matter because uh, people look over, may look over them or they're not online or something you post them and they're not online and but um other times you know people will like it uh you'll you'll get some people from it uh which is great um and there there was a time when i was like uh sometimes you know that fear of not being um the project not coming to be what it is or not reaching your goal um sort of haunted me and so I made I mean I've always wanted to make that this video but I, I made a little home video to help promote our thing um our project and you know I just at that point I just decided you know it doesn't matter what other people think I just want to do this so um yeah just being creative with different marketing uh how you market yourself how you self-promote yourself um share with your friends and family uh, as much as you can and um you know ask them to spread the word for you through email through um their own posts uh and you know don't feel like you're you're being a burden uh because you know people people that love you really want to want to get you out there and they want to help you um genuinely uh so just asking uh for help is is no burden and you know what, you, you try and, um, at, you know, at least you try. So that's the most important part. Uh, next slide. So after the project launch, uh, you're going to keep updating, um, in the Kickstarter, you can keep updating on your own social medias, um, helping and, and building a relationship with your supporters as well as other creators. So uh, you're basically branding yourself in online communities. Um, and the real, other really cool thing is cross-promotion. So we found out about cross-promotion. It was already a thing. Uh, I didn't really, it wasn't really in my mind um, to do it, but we started uh, just reaching out to other creators who were currently um, having their project Kickstarter project live at the time. So we reached out to them. We asked them, Hey, you know, would it be cool if, uh, we both promote each other's projects on, in our updates or on our social medias and everyone, for the most part, everyone was really cool about it. Um, just reaching out to other creators and, and, uh, you know, getting, uh, connecting with them and seeing their process too. Um, one of the ones uh, we started chatting and, and, you know, you never know who you're going to meet. And, and uh, he was really, he turned out to be really cool. Um, just very, uh, you know, someone I would vibe with. So uh, just meeting people that way has been um, very fulfilling. And uh, so, you know, it's always cool to just, you know, go outside of your com uh, comfort zone and try new things. Okay. Next slide. See. So if your project is successful, then send everything to the printers and put all your rewards into production. 
Um, again, be honest about your timing. Um, and also uh, when your backers should expect to receive your, the rewards. And um, there's also going to be stuff that, that comes up that you don't uh, expect, like, you know, printing delays. Um, for our project, we had a printing delay uh, because of Chinese New Year. Uh, we didn't send in our project in time before the deadline for the Chinese New Year break uh, because in, you know, they're printing in China. So they took, you know, they had two weeks uh, for the celebration and uh, we didn't make that deadline. So we had to wait two to three extra weeks for our books. Um, but, you know, when things like that happen, they're out of your control. And when that happens, you just, uh, you know, be honest about it, share with your, uh, your backers um, what's going on. Uh, just be transparent and, you know, things will, <laughs> eventually you're going to get your books. So um, just have confidence in that. And uh, yeah. Okay, next slide. So once you receive all of your uh, books and your rewards, um, pack and ship, do another update, get people to sign up for your mailing list and, you know, keep in contact with all, all those who backed and, uh, and just be excited about it because it is an exciting thing. And uh, in the, so in the past um, few days, I've been um, helping my friend um, pack everything up and it's been it's it's been tough because we did have a lot of different rewards and you know, a lot of different uh tier tiers and so just trying to organize all of the different rewards and all the different combinations um it, it can be very uh overwhelming but we've uh so far we've we've gotten through a decent chunk of it and right now we're just uh, going to finish it up and then start shipping them out. Um, but it always helps to, you know, have uh, two heads. Um, so, you know, if you have a friend or something that, that wants to, uh, you know, do a project with you, or if you want to ask them, or if, you know, someone else has an interest, same interest in doing a project, then yeah, go for it. Like, there's so many other creators or just people waiting uh, for others to, you know, reach out to them. So it's really cool to see. Um, but at the same time, you know, like this is my childhood friend. We grew up together, um, you know, in middle school, uh, not so much in high school because we went to different high schools. But um, then we reconnected when after, you know, after college. Uh, but we were really close. Our families were really close. And the tricky thing about um, doing a project with a friend, a close friend, is that, you know, like, we've had to learn through this um, process almost as if it was like a marriage, you know, just trying to understand each other work with each other because there are going to be creative differences. And so just uh, realizing what is more important, uh, your friendship over a, a project or your needs or your vision. Uh, we recognize that the, the minute um, we would hit some creative speed bumps. And so I think that helped a lot in our, uh, you know, creative relationship at the same time. But, um, you know, we did, did get into some arguments, but we, we uh, made sure that our friendship was more important than, you know, any project or any sort of business thing. Um, so we always established that. So that's always important um, to just keep things, you know, strong uh, and really uh, grounded in your values. And okay. So the next slide. And I think 
that was just the last slide. Uh, congratulations. If you, if your other stories are ready, depending on the success of what you just accomplished, start producing your next one and do it all over, all over again. Uh, yeah. So I hope, you know, you guys have picked up some, some, uh, ideas or inspiration from that. 